Hey, welcome back to another Muskie Fishing Basics. This week we're gonna talk headlocks and matlocks with what I would consider to be the headlock and matlock master, Pete Rich from Pete Rich Guide Service. Pete, we've been putting some nice fish in the boat with these things. Yep. You'll see either in future videos or or uh, some past videos, we, we definitely caught some fish on these. Both Steve and I did and Pete and Steve and I did. So why don't you tell us the differences between a headlock and a matlock and then maybe we'll talk about when you use one versus the other. Yeah, and I think the simplest way to explain it is, so I have the matlock on my left, your right, headlock on the right, and you can just see in the width of the back that the matlock is much thicker. So what that's gonna do is it makes it much more buoyant. And I think the best way to describe the action of the matlock is because it's made out of wood, it wants to float up. This big lip won't allow it to, so it's constantly fighting itself in a much more erratic, choppy action versus your traditional kind of crankbait wobble where your headlock has more of that wobble. It's less buoyant, even though the dive curve is about the exact same, there's less buoyancy to the headlock and it has much more of your traditional wobble. It's a little more straight tracking. It does walk a little bit, especially when you start getting up over five miles an hour. Um, but in my opinion, you know, the, the matlock has a much wider array of where it works uh, speed wise, all the way down to three miles an hour, up to five and a half. Headlocks really sweet from about three five to five and a half. So just a little bit where they start at that uh, different speed. So is it safe to say? I mean, obviously because of the speed difference, is that pretty much the main difference between them? I mean, is that is that how you decide which one you're going to use one over the other? No, it's the erraticness of the matlock. I think it triggers more strikes for me personally. Um, with that being said, uh, my I've caught a lot of big fish on the headlock. Um, but they're they're actually completely different baits. Okay. Um, they don't They very rarely work well in tandem that I have found um, I'll put some days I'll start with one of each and the headlock gets hit switch to two headlocks or match it with say a headlock and a Jake's where they might want that wobble Versus that extremely erratic action of the matlock. Sure So Pete the uh, headlock and the matlock are both available in a 10 inch and a 12 inch size yep. it, Can you give me kind of a difference on how they how they run and when, you, when you'd use one over the other. Yeah, you know, back to the buoyancy thing, I think is the most important part, is the 10 inch has less wood, but the same lip in both sizes. So they're gonna run a little bit deeper, a little a little less erratic. Uh, they'll hold a little more speed, actually. Uh, the 12 inch is gonna be more buoyant, uh, more erratic in both the headlock and the matlock. All right, so I guess the last question would be, if you had to pick one that you're gonna run from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, which one's it gonna be? 12 inch matlock because that will, that will start working at about 2.7 miles per hour, and I've had it all the way up to 5.5, five, and it's never blown out. So there you go, spoken from a guy who catches probably more fish on matlocks than anybody that I know. I'm not saying there aren't more guys out there, but I don't know that many people. Not many in Wisconsin. That's right. So when you just one clear to see? Sean, I think we're all right. Here we go, first one of the day, Peter. Looks like a decent one. Yeah. Here we go, boys. First one of the day, doing a little deep water troll with Peter. Another matlock fish. He's gonna come, 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 Let's get her off quick. We got hot water. Way to go, Pete. Oh, boys. He's a good one. Real good one. Nice. Big old Chippewa flowing fatty here. Good 25 pounder, I'd say mid 40s. We'll do it quick. Yeah, uh, she has not been uh, starving, that's for sure. She's good to go. She's nice and upright. Beautiful. Chip will flow here in Hayward. Thanks, Pete. Pete Rich Guide Service. Absolutely, boys. Kind of fun for me to uh, to have somebody else do the work today out with Jeff Winman, Team Rhino, and Pete Rich. Pete Rich Guide Service doing a little trolling here. Good chip. And here she goes.
nice heavy musky. That thing just plowed that matlock. I mean, it's a big, it's a big fish, but I thought it was a little bit bigger than what it was. It's still a beauty. Well, let's get her back in, Steve. Yep. Go ahead and let her off the back, buddy. Lots of boats around, so you just want to make sure she's all good. I would say uh, 42, probably. Yeah, I didn't want to put her on the bump board. It's not worth it to stress them out at this point. There she goes. This wraps up another episode of Musky Fishing Basics. This week we are talking headlocks and matlocks with Pete Rich. If you have any questions about headlocks or matlocks, just list them in the comments section and we'll take care of them the best we can. Uh, until then, we appreciate you watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, we also appreciate it if you do that. There's a uh, bell notification. If you could smash the bell notification so that way you get everything from us, that would be awesome also. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next episode.